We sometimes find ourselves in new, often scary situations we've never been in before. And that's exactly what we need sometimes. For early explorers who set sail to discover new lands, there were no maps. They were literally creating them as they went, pushing the edges of the known world. Well, known to them. Many cultures existed in these places for thousands of years before Western explorers discovered their land. But nonetheless, new discoveries were being made. The boundaries were being expanded, and as they went, they not only mapped the land, but also the sea. Uncharted waters refers to an area of water where the depths have not been mapped. Beneath the waves, there might be all kinds of hazards, shallow reefs and hidden rocks to a treacherous sandbar. To venture into uncharted waters meant to forge ahead into the unknown. And as they went, they would make observations and plumb the depths to measure how deep the waters were so that future mariners and future generations could benefit from their newfound knowledge. And that term, it still lives on today. A metaphor often used to describe any situation where we don't know exactly what'll happen. And explorers still exist today. I count myself <laughs> amongst their ranks. My specialty isn't sailing out of sight of land to discover new continents. Those days are long gone. I document extreme forces of nature and natural disasters. So I chase storms, I descend on ropes down into violently erupting volcanoes, and even head straight into the eye of hurricanes. For more than 20 years, I've frequently headed straight into places and situations where most others are fleeing from. My observations are often shared with scientists and filmed by TV cameras. However, explorer is a title that we all start out as having when we're children, especially once we learn to crawl and then walk. Just ask any parent of a, of a toddler out there, they'll tell you. And as children, we seek out the unknown and often get ourselves into trouble because of it. Curiosity killed the cat, as they say. But it's how we learn about our surroundings and environment. And we actively encourage it. For a while. Somewhere along the way, we seem to lose a lot of that inner explorer. We trade in curiosity for comfort, adventure for security. We become boring adults, worried about taxes and mortgage payments and insurance. Now, don't get me wrong, these things are important. And let me tell you, I've had some weird phone calls with insurance companies in my life. But it doesn't have to be this way. We can find adventure and discovery all around us every day. You don't have to travel to the ends of the earth or take a rocket to the moon to explore. You only have to start doing things that you've never done before. For years, the number one place on my extreme bucket list was the Darvaza Flaming Gas Crater in Turkmenistan. This place is often referred to as the doorway to hell. And that nickname is well-deserved. This massive crater in the Karakum Desert is a sinkhole that was formed by a natural gas drilling operation gone wrong. The ground collapsed, forming a giant pit which was leaking methane gas. Flammable methane gas. That gas ignited some five decades ago and is still burning to this day. It looks like a volcano out amongst the sand dunes, but it's the spectacular remnant of an industrial accident. So, I had the task as a National Geographic expedition leader to go here, descend down into the crater, and gather soil samples for DNA analysis. We were looking for extremophile bacteria, tiny microbes that actually thrive in conditions that we consider deadly. Now, NASA has discovered all kinds of planets outside of our solar system that might support life. Some of these planets 
have hot methane rich environments. If we could find any microscopic life living at the bottom of this incredibly hot crater, it could give us clues as to where we might want to expand our search for life on other planets. Basically, looking for alien life right here on Earth. Discovering life on another planet, any life, even microscopic bacteria, would significantly change everything we know about biology and our understanding of the universe. We know that statistically, life on another planet is likely, but we just haven't been able to prove it yet. The hard part for me was those soil samples that might hold the clues we're looking for are at the bottom of a crater that's literally filled with fire and it was my job to go down there and gather them. Something that nobody's ever done before. Now, after close to two years of planning, preparation, and negotiations with the Turkmenistan government, I finally got permission to go there. I brought with me an expert rope rigging team, a logistics organizer, a microbiologist, and a huge TV crew. After spending a week camped out beside the world's most amazing fire pit, which I really should have brought a long stick and some marshmallows to, we determined that the best way to pull this off was to stretch fire-resistant ropes across the entire 230-foot span of the crater. That's about 70 meters. I would then put on an aluminum heat-resistant suit with a self-contained air, and then go out on the ropes in a Kevlar harness. It's the same material that they use to make bulletproof vests out of. Any other climbing harness would have melted from the heat. So the plan was dangle out on the ropes, go out to the very center on pulleys, and then rappel down to the bottom. Once there, I'd only have 17 minutes worth of air to gather a few soil samples, take some temperature readings, shoot some video, and then get out of there. Now, the Nat Geo crew that filmed this whole expedition, they did it for an episode of a TV series that they titled Die Trying. <laughs> Let's just say I wasn't too impressed with the title that they chose because I was the guy that was trying. But despite the poisonous methane gas, the tricky terrain, almost running out of air, and the intense heat, which at one point, I measured to be about 400 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than a pizza oven. I was able to do everything I needed at the bottom and then signal my team to haul me back up to safety. Once we were back home, the samples underwent a DNA testing at a lab in Chicago. And yes, we found a small population of microbes living in those hellish conditions. Some of them appear to have been actually consuming the methane gas. So the expedition was a tremendous success. We found bizarre, undocumented microscopic life. We made a, an exciting TV show, and I was even awarded a Guinness World Record for becoming the first person to ever set foot at the bottom of that crater. Twelve people have stood on the surface of the moon, but only one has been to the bottom of the doorway to hell. And standing at the bottom of that crater, just surrounded by what I call a coliseum of fire, really hit me emotionally. It was a sensory overload. The orange glow, the heat, the jet engine roar of the fires, and the <laughs> Darth Vader sound of my breathing apparatus really made it feel as if I was standing on another planet. And I suppose this is about as close to visiting another planet as you can get right here on Earth. The sense of awe I felt was overwhelming. And we rarely get to experience the emotion of awe in our daily lives. Awe is respect mixed with fear or wonder usually when observing something much bigger or more powerful than us. Some people experience it when they see the Grand Canyon for the very first time, or the birth of their newborn child, or looking deep into the cosmos through a powerful telescope. 
while there aren't that many scientific studies on this emotion, test subjects that have been interviewed frequently describe nature and art to be sources of awe. This powerful emotion really anchors memories in our brain, and we often can recall these moments of being awestruck for the rest of our lives. So do me a favor. Just close your eyes for a few moments and think of a time in your life when you've been in awe of something, when you've experienced that emotion. I bet it's easy because those powerful moments are pretty deeply etched into our memories. And I suspect that a lot of you are also smiling right now as you recall those memories. Now, did that experience of awe happen during a time when you were doing something that you've done a thousand times before? Or was it during a new novel experience for you? I think I know the answer. You see, curiosity leads to new experiences, which are often rewarded by that emotion of awe, which in turn reinforces more personal exploration. And the cycle repeats. For me, as a professional explorer, I simply take this exercise to the extreme, but we can all experience something similar. All we have to do is take a few calculated risks, set comfort aside, and try something new. It doesn't have to be something that no one's ever done before. It only has to be something that you've never done before. Thank you.